what is the most likely, what is the most useful test to clinically distinguish between upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron of the facial nerve? So let me explain this to you guys. We're having here uh, the facial nerve, which is the seventh cranial nerve. It primarily arises from the ventrolateral surface of the uh, pones. And obviously we're having two facial nerves on both sides. And it has the nucleus of the facial nerve. We're having basically two nuclei, okay? And these two nuclei is called facial motor nucleus. So we're having right facial motor nucleus and left facial motor nucleus, okay? And both of them are divided into anterior division and posterior division, okay? So on the right side, you're having anterior and posterior, and on the left side as well, you're having posterior and anterior. And the way I draw it this way is very important and will be relevant in a second. So the posterior division of the facial motor nucleus gives impulses to the temporal branch of the facial nerve, okay? Which is the first branch of the fifth facial nerve branches. So this temporal nerve, it takes impulses, um, like we're having two temporal nerves on both sides, so they take impulses from the right and left at the same time. On the other side, if you look at the anterior division, either of right or left, it gives multiple branches, impulses to multiple branches, including sigmatic, buccal, mandibular, and finally, cervical, okay? So I'll copy this to the other side as well. So, again, the anterior division of the nucleus, it gives branches or impulses to zygomatic, buccal, mandibular, and cervical, okay? So, here comes the question. What if the right facial motor nucleus, meaning the right anterior and posterior facial motor nucleus is affected, okay? So, the um, four branches, which are zygomatic, buccal, temporal, will be affected. But I just here, I just wrote bilateral. The temporal nerve takes branches from bilateral facial nuclei. On the other side, these four branches takes only unilateral, meaning the temporal nerve will be spared most of the time because it has side that is not working and the other side is working. So again, let me repeat this with you. If you're having right side, right facial motor nucleus is affected, so the zygomatic, buccal, mandibular, and cervical would be definitely affected. Okay, so, so zygomatic, buccal, mandibular, cervical will definitely be affected, meaning that the mid face and lower face will be definitely affected. Okay, however, if you look at the temporal nerve, which takes branches bilaterally, takes impulses bilaterally, it will not be affected because it takes impulse from the left and the right side as well. So if the left side is affected, the right side will cover it, okay? And this is what we call by upper motor neuron. So the upper quadrant of the face on the same side, ipsilateral upper quadrant will not be affected. Likewise, if the left side is affected, so digomatic, buccal, mandibular, cervical will definitely be affected. But the temporal nerve, because it takes impulse from the right side as well, it will not be affected. So the upper, the ipsilateral upper quadrant of the face will be spared an upper motor neuron. On the other side, for the lower motor neuron injury, so the injury is usually, is almost all the time, is below the medulla, okay? So meaning that it does not matter if the anterior facial nucleus or the posterior facial nucleus is affected. It doesn't matter because this is way beyond, beyond it. These are the fibers that transmits the impulses from both anterior and posterior, so it doesn't matter now, okay? So there is no differences. So for lower motor neurons, so the ipsilateral whole face will be affected. So the whole side will be affected if we are in lower motor neuron lesion. Okay. 
I hope that make sense. So the most important impulse here, the friendship between upper modern and lower modern is raising the eyebrow. Why? Because the temporal nerve function is basically uh, for the levator palpebra superiors, so raising the eyebrow is differentiating between upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron.